guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends. So, I maxed out three legendaries over the last month or so, which I did not tell you guys about. There are three kind of, well, mediocre legendaries. I don't know. You guys can be the judge. I have to admit, a couple of these, one specifically did impress me, and it's actually the one who I think on paper a lot of people think is the worst out of the three. So let's go ahead and jump into it here and talk about the three champions that we're going to be spotlighting in today's video, starting with a best. So a best, a, a champion who just received a buff, actually in her skills on mass impalement, attacks all enemies, now has a 100% chance of placing the decrease defense. It was four enemies at random, I believe. Uh, previously, that's on a three turn, so she is now a consistent debuffer on your team. She still has that A3, which deals extra damage now if the target's attack is highest, which we don't really care about. That's really going to be the case with uh, uh, Abyss. Uh, ignores, though, 30% of the target's defense if the target's defense is higher. That's on a four-turn cooldown, and uh, yeah, damage inflicted is proportional to either this champion's attack or the target's defense or attack stat, whichever is highest. You know, the only thing you need to know about this skill is that it does a lot of damage. It always has done a lot of damage. It's an AoE attack, Divine Wrath. So a debuffer with a lot of damage on the A3, sign me up, right? Era of Rebuke on the A1, uh, removes one random debuff from this champion and places it on the target. Masteries on this champion. I kind of loaded up uh, the uh, the attack on her, or I should say the damage potential on this champion, because Abess, I figure I could use her probably in the arena. That's where I'll spotlight her in today's video. So we went with Flawless Execution. Didn't go with Laura Steel. That's why you should never blindly copy-paste Masteries from any YouTuber or website, because I didn't need it. I don't have any basic sets on her. Uh, I have the Savage and Crit Rate uh, gear on her. As I said, I do have Savage gear. Uh, does the best Savage gear in terms of the optimal damage especially for arena so i have savage with crit damage on the gauntlets attack percentage on the chest with a triple roll on accuracy not too bad and i needed it having a triple roll on accuracy here on the chest i need to upgrade that glyph as well uh that allowed me to go with attack on the uh banner talk about it all the time here on the channel if you can get by with attack on the banner and get your accuracy somewhere else from your debuffers go ahead and do that of course i would not be able to use her with uh what 200 in three accuracy wouldn't be able to use her in the arena at that accuracy so i went attack percentage on the chest as well let's go ahead and move on to the next champion it is war chief considered one of the worst champions in the game uh legendary uh but you know i figured this guy decent hp enough so that i can skinwalkers is one faction uh war crypt that i have not beaten level 21 so i figured you know what let's build this dude out put him in a shield set because he's the highest uh basically this is something you guys can do as well to get past uh kind of sticking points plateaus in progression for faction crypts go ahead and look at your team uh, out of your, you know, level 60 champions that you've already invested in to get to rank 6, 6 star, I should say, uh, look at who has the highest hit points out of them. For me, it was Warchief, so I threw him in on a shield set, and I tried to build up some HP on this champion. You know, he's a defensive-based champion, so it's a little bit counterintuitive, but he's not dealing a ton of damage. I mean, look at his abilities, right? On his A1, attacks one enemy three times, has a chance of placing a Provoke debuff, and on his A2, uh, has a Provoke debuff for three turns, steals two random buffs from the target. That's it, dude. That's this whole champion, right? Well, I should say his passive is still solid too, but still, that's his only active abilities. Reflects 60% of the damage taken back to the attacker. Defense increased by 15% for each dead ally. So, you know, I figured... Try to get some utility out of this dude. I think he desperately needs a buff of some sort. Uh, so I was disappointed to not see that in the last uh, balance changes. However, his defense is really high, 1465. So it scales really well as well. Mastery's Giant Slayer is a bunch of triple hits on this champion. So went with Master, uh, excuse me, Giant Slayer. And then I went with Retribution as well on the defensive tree for Warchief. So, you know, Warchief... We'll see. We'll see. I mean, I don't know, man. He's a. I went actually defense on the chest, went HP on the gauntlets, just try to have kind of a nice even, uh, you know, uh, balance between the HP and the defense on this champion. I don't know. Uh, after testing him out a little bit, maybe even going HP on the chest. If I'm going to put him in the shield set anyway, might be worth it. But I don't know, man. He's just not a great champion. I'm going to show you him in action. Now, I'm going to put all three of these champions together on the same team for Fire Knight. And I will show you some arena spotlight of a best as well in today's video. So that's what I went with a uh, war chief, Richoff the Bold. Uh, so Rich Toff, excuse me, the Bold. 
So Banner Lords, the reason I maxed this champ, the reason I maxed all three of these champions, uh, Skinwalker, Sacred Order, and Banner Lords, is because I have not beat those faction war crypts, and that's what I want to do here. I'm building out champions to help me do so. So Richoff the Bold has a skill that, man, it's really good, right? So on his A1 attacks all enemies. So an AOE on his A1 already, okay, sounds pretty good. Decrease each target's max HP by 30% of the damage inflicted. So a really solid A1 in uh, in on his A2 bloodletting is attacks one enemy three times. But but get this on a three turn, very similar to Bad L. Each hit plays a 5% poison debuff on all enemies for two turns. Bloodletting is a really, really good ability. So basically, we're putting three poisons on all enemies, attacks one enemy three times. Each hit plays a 5% poison debuff on all enemies. That's a lot of damage on a three turn cooldown with poisons on everybody. And then Curse Hold attacks one en enemy. Uh, damage uh, increases, excuse me, if I can speak today, by 20% for each poison debuff on the target, stacks up to 100%. So for Clan Boss, this dude can put out some serious damage. You really can. You can compare him to a champion like Dracomorph. Just in Clan Boss, because of the Curse Hold synergy and all this poison damage as well. So I think that, you know, he is on paper, again, one of the worst uh, legendaries. But I gotta say, he's impressed me the most out of the three. Uh, I already knew what a best could do on her A3 in the arena. But man, he puts out some serious damage, this dude, uh, because of the bloodletting ability. So I think that he's a champion who definitely has a lot of capabilities, a lot of potential. I went Warmaster on this champion, uh, you know, figuring I'm going to use him in Clan Boss, you know, maybe just to mess around, I don't know. And then I went with uh, a Sniper and Master Hexer as well uh, for the poisons, of course, on this champion. So that's how we built him out in terms of his masteries, in terms of his artifacts. We built him out with some Cruel. Uh, so did something different with this champion. I'm only going to be using him for me uh, in... in uh, Maybe in Fire... I was impressed with him in Fire Knight, honestly. But, you know, I went into building him thinking I'm going to use him for Faction Wars, okay? So for that reason, look at his base defense. Really low at 925. Uh, his HP is actually pretty solid, but I got to keep this dude alive, you know? So my goal here with his accessories, I decided let's go all... Well, not all, but let's go HP, HP, some defense. So build out... And you guys can do this too for progression or for difficult areas of the game. You don't have to, just because he's an attack-based champion who can put out a lot of damage. If I was building him just for clan boss and like an unkillable team or something like that, of course I would just maximize attack. But, you know, you never, again, just like we said with masteries, you never just want to blindly copy what other people do or what the website tells you. Always think about where you're going to be using this champion. So I needed to, to, to stay alive, right? I need some sustainability on this champion. So I went with HP on the uh, ring, and I went with accuracy on with HP sub roll, defense uh, sub stat roll uh, on the banner, and then I went with crit damage on the uh, the amulet. So could have stacked him with way more attack. I also went defense on the chest, you know? I mean, his defense is so low, it scales pretty poorly, but I still need to, this I, again, I need him to stay alive, you know? So I had to go defense on the chest. Uh, Could have went HP, but I'd rather a little bit of defense on this champion. Uh, and then I went speed on the boots. I went crit rate on the gauntlets. Uh, You know, it looks like he has, he has a lot of legendary gear on him. It looks like he has, like, god tier gear. I actually built him to be more uh, well-rounded, despite all the legendary gear, with, you know, just prioritizing getting Getting some attack and I got a double roll here with a 5% so really solid there but you know looking for HP and defense on my substats when I could find it I'll uh, get a little extra crit rate here HP defense and again looking for some accuracy some speed some HP percent uh, percentage again keeping this champion alive is my goal here for faction wars really need help in banner lords so those are the three champions that I maxed out guys uh, I wasted I saved my legendary books for a while I wasted all of them on these champions all these crappy legendary champions so do as I say, not as I do. Be very tactful and strategic when thinking about where you're going to be using uh, your legendary books as they're one of the most scarce, they're the most scarce resource in the game, uh, unless you consider Sacred Shards also a resource, which I guess it is. Anyway, all on the same team here, guys. I think you're going to be impressed, right? I, I put them in with a Coltar and a Lysandra because I have real, really no support on this team at all to speak of. So I need a Lysandra for the turn meter manipulation and the exhaustion to get that shield down once we get to the Fire Knight. Uh, and, you know, there's the there it is. Look at that, dude. 
three poisons on everybody from uh, Richoff the the bold. So really solid there. Uh, I gotta say, and that was the I'm not sure if it was the massive. I think we saw the A2 and the A3 of of Abbas there on the first round. So you can see, man, this is like solid, right? I mean, and we have the shield to keep us alive too from uh, Warchief. So the decreased defense, I think that uh, definitely uh, Abess is a really solid uh, decreased defense champion now. If you were, you know, if you're lucky enough to have her and you weren't using her, it's definitely a, a considerable upgrade to War Maiden to say the least in terms of a force affinity AOE decreased defense champion. Of course, we're comparing a rare to a legendary champion, which is stupid to do, but you guys get the point. Anyway, we're already at Fire Knight 56 seconds in. It's very, very unlikely we'll get the shield down the first time. So let's see what we can do here. And again, a few multi-hitters on War Chief is going to help us out too for Fire Knight. And, you know, just kind of haphazardly throwing these three champions in the same team. It actually worked out pretty well, right? I mean, they're a pretty well-rounded team all together for Fire Knight. And I just think it's fun from time to time. You guys know I've done this a few times in the past. I'm actually going to do one with Epic Champions as well soon here. Uh, I like making videos especially when I've been working on champions that necessarily aren't the best in the world, don't necessarily, you know, need a full guide. I think I can kind of two bird, three bird with one or two stones or whatever, whatever the saying, appropriate saying would be here and kind of talk about a bunch of champions in one video. So finally got that shield down there and uh, this is going to be uh, Sayonara. Fire Knight is dead now in about two minutes. Actually, it's going to be take a little bit longer because of the Heart Seeker ability, but you can see we're going to stack up those poisons. The A3 will hit a little bit harder. Again, not fully optimized for this run, but I'm very curious to see how the damage will kind of split up amongst these three three characters uh, that we have. I'm sure Coldheart will be the, the biggest damage dealer on this team. Uh, there's really no doubt of that in my mind, but that was the A1 of Richoff. And I'm saying his name right, right? I think so. I don't know. Uh, there's the Heart Seeker. There we go. There's half a million. Thank you very much from the rare champion on the team carrying the damage here. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, I think that out of these three, are you impressed with any of these three champions specifically? Uh, I can't say that. I think that you'll be impressed with uh, Abess as we take her into the arena here, but uh, Abess put out 1.1 million damage. Uh, Coltar actually out damaged Coltar there, and then Rich, uh, Rich Toff the Bold put out uh, 800,000. So not too bad here. Uh, Abess actually coming out in the lead in terms of damage. So really solid, and look at this artifact. Oh my god, I can't believe I pulled such an amazing artifact on the video live for you guys. Wow, what a special day, huh? Uh, let's go to the arena here. Go to, uh, yeah, I think that any of these teams, it was reset uh, at the time of this recording on Monday. So I'm going to go ahead and spotlight uh, Abess here, guys. And you'll see just how much damage she can do. She's a, she's really a top tier arena nuker. Uh, I wouldn't say she's meta. After the Rotos nerf, though, she's a little bit easier to use because she didn't have the double hitters. So having a champion like Trunda or a block revival like uh, Foley or another double hitter in a champion like uh, Biggin uh, were meta for a while uh, or were more meta than her. But here we go. Divine Ravel. She what she can do here. I think she'll kill everybody, hopefully, except for Skull Crown. So boom. And she did 128,000 damage I saw go by. Man, that's a lot of damage. And again, it gets to be a point, though, that, you know, you can think about building... I don't have to have her in Savage Gear, necessarily, I don't think, you know, because she's doing so much damage with her A3 that I think you're, you're kind of running into diminished returns at the same time where you need to think about just overkill, right? You don't always need to do double the HP of these champions that you're facing. So again, here, we'll kind of run it back uh, with this squad uh, just to kind of show off her damage, really. Let's see. Ceres goes next. That nerf to Ceres was such a joke, man. It didn't do anything to her at all, really. I mean, a little bit less useful in dungeons, but really, where Ceres was OP is uh, in the arena, and they didn't change that at all. So, man, a little bit slow there. I'm just going to use the A4 here of Arbiter, speed her up so that she can go next, and here we go. Bye-bye, right? Boom. Oh, 
She didn't kill everybody that time. How about that? Of course, the affinity matchup against Valkyrie with a high defense uh, is definitely going to come into play there. But we can just take it on auto here. Guys, I mean, I think for the most part, you get the point on these champions. I won't make this video 25 minutes and show you everywhere in every little area of the game. But suffice it to say, uh, they're all useful if you have them, right? Are they all the best end game viable champions in the game? No, certainly not. But at the end of the day, I think that you guys, if you're lucky enough to pull any of these legendary champions, I think you guys are going to be uh, happy with them serving a, a unique role in wh whichever area of the game that you're using them. I think that all three of these champions, for the most part, can be used in one area or another in this game. And man, Angar really giving me issues here with this squad. But boom, there we go. Finally, a best coming back in there from the dead and finishing it off there. So guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the video here. Which one of these three champions do you like the most would be first on your wish list out of these three champs let me know in the comments below guys and do you like these videos where i cover like multiple champions in one video again uh rather than doing three videos on champions that likely not everybody most people do not have let me know in the comments below again guys thank you so much for watching and as always take care guys